Good day to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this sixth day of April. It is day 96 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name is Hunter. I am your brother, your Bible reading coach, someone who shows up with you every day to spend some time together in the pages of the Bible. And today, those pages are going to do what they do every day and direct our hearts to the one who is the living Word of God, the one alone who has the words of life. So we come from all around the world. We come here to warm our hearts by the fires of God's love. Make no mistake about it, my friend. God is love. And so today, we're going to look into the book of Ruth, chapters 3 and 4, then Psalm 64 and 65, and we will finish in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. This is the word of the Lord. Ruth chapter 3. One day Naomi said to Ruth, My daughter, it's time that I found a permanent home for you, so that you will be provided for. Boaz is a close relative of ours, and he's been very kind by letting you gather grain with his young women. Tonight he will be winnowing barley at the threshing floor. Now do as I tell you. Take a bath and put on perfume and dress in your nicest clothes. Then go to the threshing floor. Don't let Boaz see you until he has finished eating and drinking. Be sure to notice where he lies down, and then go and uncover his feet and lie down there. He will tell you what to do. I will do everything you say, Ruth replied. So she went down to the threshing floor that night and followed the instructions of her mother-in-law. After Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, He lay down at the far end of a pile of grain and went to sleep. Then Ruth came quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. Around midnight, Boaz suddenly woke up and turned over. He was surprised to find a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant Ruth, she replied. Spread the corner of your cover over me, for you are my family redeemer. The Lord bless you, my daughter, Boaz exclaimed. You are showing even more family loyalty now than you did before, for you have not gone after the younger men, whether rich or poor. Now don't worry about a thing, my daughter. I will do what is necessary, for everyone in town knows you are a virtuous woman. But while it's true that I am one of your family redeemers, there is another man who is more closely related to you than I am. Stay here tonight, and in the morning I'll talk to him. If he's willing to redeem you very well, let him marry you. But if he is not willing, then as surely as the Lord lives, I will redeem you myself. Now lie down here until morning. So Ruth lay at Boaz's feet until the morning, but she got up before it was light enough for people to recognize each other, for Boaz had said, No one must know that a woman was here at the threshing floor. Then Boaz said to her, Bring your cloak and spread it out. He measured six scoops of barley into the cloak and placed it on her back. Then she returned to the town. When Ruth went back to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, What happened, my daughter? Ruth told Naomi everything Boaz had done for her, and she added, He gave me six scoops of barley and said, Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said to her, Just be patient, my daughter, until we hear what happens. The man won't rest until he has settled things today. Ruth 4 Boaz went to the town gate and took a seat there. Just then the family redeemer he had mentioned came by. So Boaz called out to him, Come over here and sit down, friend. I want to talk to you. So they sat down together. Then Boaz called ten leaders from the town and asked them to sit as witnesses. And Boaz said to the family redeemer, You know Naomi who came back from Moab. She is selling the land that belongs to our relative Elimelech. I thought I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it if you wish. If you want the land, then buy it here in the presence of these witnesses. But if you don't want it, let me know right away, because I am next in line to redeem it after you. The man replied, All right, I'll redeem it. Then Boaz told him, Of course, your purchase of the land from Naomi also requires that you marry Ruth, the Moabite widow. That way she can have children who will carry on her husband's name and keep the land in the family. Then I can't redeem it the family redeemer replied, because this might endanger my own estate. 
You redeem the land. I cannot do it. Now in those days, it was the custom in Israel for anyone transferring a right of purchase to remove his sandal and hand it to the other party. This publicly validated the transaction. So the other family redeemer drew off his sandal as he said to Boaz, You buy the land. Then Boaz said to the elders and to the crowd standing around, You are witnesses that today I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Mahalon. And with the land, I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Mahalon, to be my wife. This way she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You are all witnesses today. Then the elders and the people standing at the gate replied, We are witnesses. May the Lord make this woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, from whom all the nations of Israel descended. May you prosper in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. And may the Lord give you descendants by this young woman, who will be like those of our ancestor Perez, the son of Tamar and Judah. So Boaz took Ruth into his home, and she became his wife, When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant, and she gave birth to a son. Then the women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord, who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age. For he is the son of your daughter-in-law, who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. Naomi took the baby and cuddled him in her breast, and she cared for him as if he were her own. The neighbor woman said, Now at last Naomi has a son again. And they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. This is the genealogical record of their ancestor Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nahashon. Nahashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. Psalm 64 For the choir director, a psalm of David. O God, listen to my complaint. Protect my life from my enemies' threats. Hide me from the plots of this evil mob, from this gang of wrongdoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim their bitter words like arrows. They shoot from ambush at the innocent and attack suddenly and fearlessly. They encourage each other to do evil and plan how to set their traps in secret. Who will ever notice, they ask. As they plot their crimes, they say, We have deceived the perfect plan. Yes, the human heart and mind are cunning, but God himself will shoot them with his arrows, suddenly striking them down. Their own tongues will ruin them, and all who see them will shake their heads in scorn. Then everyone will be afraid. They will proclaim the mighty acts of God and realize all the amazing things he does. The godly will rejoice in the Lord and find shelter in him and those who do what is right will praise him. Psalm 65 For the choir director, a song, a psalm of David. What mighty praise, O God, belongs to you in Zion. We will fulfill our vows to you, for you answer our prayers. All of us must come to you, though we are overwhelmed by our sins. You forgive them all. What joy for those you choose to bring near, those who live in your holy courts. What festivities awaits us inside your holy temple. You faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds. O God, our Savior, you are the hope of everyone on earth. Even those who sail on distant seas, you formed the mountains by your power and armed yourself with mighty strength. You quieted the raging oceans with your pounding waves and silenced the shouting of the nations. Those who live at the ends of the earth stand in awe of your wonders. From where the sun rises to where it sets, you inspire shouts of joy. You take care of the earth and water it, making it rich and fertile. The river of God has plenty of water. It provides a bountiful harvest of grain, for you have ordered it so. You drench the plowed ground with rain, melting the clods and leveling the ridges. You soften the earth with showers and bless its abundant crops. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. 
Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness become a lush pasture, and the hillsides blossom with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks of sheep, and the valleys are carpeted with grain. They all shout and sing for joy. 2 Corinthians 6 As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. For God says, At just the right time I heard you. On the day of salvation I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. We live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us, and no one will find fault with our ministry. In everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. We have been beaten, been put in prison, faced angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. We prove ourselves by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness, by the Holy Spirit within us, and by our sincere love. We faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. We serve God whether people honor us or despise us, whether they slander us or praise us. We are honest, but they call us impostors. We are ignored, even though we are well known. We live close to death, but we are still alive. We've been beaten, but we have not been killed. Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. We are poor, but we give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, and yet we have everything. Oh, dear Corinthian friends, we have spoken honestly with you, and our hearts are open to you. There's no lack of love on our part, but you have withheld your love from us. I'm asking you to respond as if you were my own children. Open your hearts to us. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers And separate yourself from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you. I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And now may the Lord Almighty give his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. The Book of Ruth is a love story from beginning to end, but it doesn't look that way at first. It looks like a cruel tragedy with famine, displacement, exile, loss, death. Naomi thinks her story is one giant dead end. She tells people not to call her Naomi, but rather call her Mara, which means bitter. She believes that her story is one bitter, cruel, tragic loss. Some of you might be tempted to think the same of your own story. And after these last few years, I'd have a hard time blaming you. Hardships have come. You've experienced loss. You've experienced death. We've all been displaced. We feel like we're in exile. When we look back on our story and try to piece things together, it's easy to feel bitterness well up. But Ruth teaches us something really important that when we respond in faith to God, as Ruth did, a story that started out so tragic, looked like a giant dead end, grows into something completely different. Ruth, the Gentile, chooses the God of Naomi, even though Naomi had given up on that God. The story, in the end, becomes an epic love story (laughs) that moves beyond and forward into the future with eternal ramifications. Out of this love between Ruth and Boaz, the kinsman redeemer is born the grandfather of King David. And from King David will be born the redeemer of the world, Jesus. He's come to be the kinsman redeemer of all. But all of us can learn from Ruth 
by responding in faith as she did. When we do that, it becomes possible for us to see what God has done and what He is doing. God is at work in our lives. I know it might be really hard for most of us to really see that, but amidst the loss, there's a story of God's love being written, and you might not see it now, but hold on to Him, and you will discover our kinsman redeemer was there all along. Let us all learn from Ruth today. That's a prayer that I have for my own soul. That's a prayer that I have for my family, for my wife, my daughters, my son. And that's a prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Let's continue now in a time of prayer. Feel free to read along with these prayers in the show notes of today's podcast and meditate on these words that are being spoken over you, your family, and our world. And now, let us pray. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we might not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit on all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I might not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again, friends, for joining me here at the DRB for this time in the Scriptures and in prayer. And before I let you go, I do want to remind you that hunterpottery.com still has some of our small bud vases available. If you didn't hear the first time, I made these vases as a bit of a reminder for my own heart and for yours too, that we ought to take some time during this season to consider the beauty of our Lord, His wonderful creation, Take some time to reflect on God's care for our souls. Jesus looked at the lilies and he said, Consider these, friends. (laughs) Consider that bird and consider these flowers. Consider the way that God beautifies our lives and cares for our lives. Worthy thoughts indeed of a worthy God 
If you want to take a look at those vases, you can find them at hunterpottery.com. I'll also include the link in the show notes of today's podcast. You can also see them, by the way, at our Facebook page. And if you haven't signed up for that, that might be a good time to do it. And last of all, friends, I just want to say thank you to some of our partners today. These are the folks that make this podcast and every podcast that we do possible. So thank you, Esperance Manuncheka, Paige and Chris Syverson, Amanda Lundberg, Christopher Hoops, Jason Rittenhouse, Jennifer Schmidt, Scott Gardner, and Jenny Bauer. Blessings to you my sisters, my brothers, my co-laborers in the work of the Lord. Listen, I know that many of you are not able to give, and that is okay. Indeed it is. This podcast is free of charge because I want everyone and anyone to have access to what we do here. I want to thank you too for being a part of this community. And if you are listening today and you are able to give and you would like to do that, it would bring you joy, in fact, to do so. And that is so appreciated. And all you need to do is head on over to the webpage, dailyradiobible.com, and click on the donate link. You can also find that very same link in the show notes of today's podcast. And if you're old school and you prefer to do things through the U.S. Post, you can reach us at Daily Radio Bible 2748 Northeast Molini Way, Hillsboro, Oregon 97124. Well, we've done it. I plan on doing it again tomorrow. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, I plan on being here. Until that time, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let His joy be our strength. And let us always remember this. that you are loved. Now there's a thought worth thinking about. Alrighty? I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.